Father in heaven, we're thankful today for your many blessings. You have brought us to this prophetic insights. You have been with us in the past. And I believe since you are the same God yesterday, today, and forever, you are with us even now. We believe that in your presence, there's fullness of joy. And at thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Grant us what we desire and what we need. Revival, reformation. Bless us now, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Greetings. Salutations. Welcome to this Prophetic Insights. And I have a special program for you by God's grace. We have come to receive a word from the Lord. If you have come to receive that present truth from the Lord, send in the amens there in the live chat room in the audience, my friends. Welcome one, welcome all. Saving souls, Elvelyn, Richard, amen. All right, friends, it's rolling. Calvert, Anselm, welcome one, welcome all. I want to begin this midday power surge, this prophetic insights, with continuing where we left off during midday power surge. It's a solemn time that we're living in, my friends. And today we have a special guest, no stranger to us, Brother Wilhelm Lecky, evangelist there in Jamaica. Take a look. Let's take a look at what's happening there in Jamaica from the, the Prime Minister. In place. The truth is that if all Jamaicans were banked, that is that they had a bank account, then there would be no need, no, absolutely no need to go to a physical place to collect your money. And indeed, if all Jamaicans were digitally provisioned, meaning that they had a facility to go online and there were payment, there were fin financial technology solutions that could have allow for widespread payments, then there would be no need for many of the lines that we are seeing. So a part of this COVID epidemic is the transition of the society to a digital society. Indeed, hopefully, this will be one of the long-lasting changes that would result from this crisis. So, you know, friends, for some individuals, they are ignorant of what these things mean based on end-time Bible prophecies. So we want to break it down and simplify these things for you all. Due to the fact that based on Scripture... The mark of the beast crisis begins in America. Let's take a look at what is being promoted here in America regarding the digital society, a cashless society. And then we can better understand what is being promoted there in Jamaica. Let's take a look at this. During the stimulus bill, I covered this a number of times, even this morning, midday power surge. The individuals who are pushing for a digital dollar, a cashless society, a digital society, are individuals who are connected to the Vatican. Now, since I covered this, I won't spend the time to read this again. Daniel Gorfin, Charles and Chris Giancarlo, linked to the Inquisition board. And they're telling us that, notice, with the flick of a switch, they can leave us penniless. And we understand based on Revelation 13, verse 15 through verse 17, God's commandment keeping people will not be able to buy or sell. So the opening video from the Prime Minister of Jamaica I have played that clip again to set the stage for you all now to hear from evangelist Wilhelm Lecky of what is going on there in Jamaica based on current events in light of Bible prophecy. 
So help me welcome Brother Lecky. Welcome, Brother. Thank you, Preacher. Glad to be here again with God's people to look at these prophetic events as we near the close of time. You know, I want to start out with a text, Daniel chapter 12 and verse 10. It reads, it says, many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And when we think about the wise, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10, it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And that could carry us into Revelation chapter 14 and verse 6 that says, Fear God and give him glory, for this is the hour of his judgment. And indeed, preacher, yes. this is where we are. We are in the hour of judgment. And truly only the wise will understand. Those who have fear God and keep his commandment, according to Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13, this is the whole duty of man, to fear God and keep his commandments. Preacher, we want to move to the first slide that breaks down for us the stipulations in most recent time, as recent as yesterday, that the government has added to the restrictions here in Jamaica. And I want to come down to, you know, you can, you can read through it and you'll see point by point, one all the way down to 13, all the different things. But I want to bring out point 10, which says wearing of masks and in bold mandatory in all public places to include even public passenger vehicles. I highlighted the word mandatory because of one simple fact. As we see the fear, the panic, and the worry on the people, these are some of the strong words that are going to be used, such as mandatory, which means without choice, which means must happen, saving and excluding none. You know, personally, preacher, I have not worn a mask since all of this has begun. I'm not advocating that people don't wear masks for their safety and their protection. But I want to bring our eyes and bring light to that word mandatory. And to show that the practice run has begun. It really has begun. And if we come down to the last point, right there still on 13, and we can see in red, Sunday, no movement day. The other red word says, no, no movement day. Only medication can be dispensed. You know, I know some would argue that initially it was more restricted, especially as it pertains to Seventh-day Adventists. And now the prime minister, he said in recent times, he had a discussion with the president, Everett Brown of Jamaica Union. And so many would be rejoicing that, you know, more days have been given for shopping. But I want to bring to light the fact that the script has not changed. The script has not changed. They have done many things with many different days in a week. But Sunday remains untouched, no movement days. And we have seen all the news. You brought it out last week. All the news across the world. Everyone is singing the same song. No movement, no car driving. Do not cross the street to your neighbor. All of this is on Sunday in Peru, Puerto Rico, all across the world. And today, tonight, I want to bring to light the fact that it is right here in Jamaica. And if we get to the next slide, we get to the next slide you know we can see that it's the same team um, should i replay that video just for those who may not have heard what yes. the prime minister said regarding sunday yes definitely okay we have adjusted the times for markets and the markets will now, instead of being closed at 2 p.m. On the, and it was Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we will now allow the markets to open all week, except on Sunday, up to 4 p.m. So the markets will go from 6 to 4 
they will be closed on Sundays. Um, so there will be one day without any market opening at all. Yes, preacher. So even essentials such as food cannot be touched on that day. I want to make it clear that it is quite possible the Prime Minister himself does not see to where these actions are tending. It is our duty and our job as watchmen to give the trumpet a certain sound and to bring awareness to these points. Not when it falls, but even as early as now. And as we're looking at this, the slide that says the same team, you know, that picture speaks a thousand words. And, you know, preacher, I, I, wanna, I wanna ask a question. I wanna ask a question, even as a medical personnel, when was it that um, Bill Gates became the authority on vaccines? Hmm. Which medical school did he study in? What medical degree does he have? These are questions that we ought to ask. I want to question the fact that a man that believes in depopulation of bringing the earth down by 10 to 15 percent, 700 million to about a, um, a billion, and now he's pushing mandatory vaccination. You know, some would think I'm extreme to bring up that picture, and it's probably just a casual picture, but this is the point I'm trying to make. You know, they're all meeting. They're, they're having talks on the round table. You know, we are told the Sunday movement is going to make its way in darkness. I'm not sure it's in much darkness anymore. The wise truly will understand. The wise truly will understand. And so these things are pushing the country fast track into, you know, a situation where we are going to have control of the nation, control of all that's happening. As a matter of fact, one of the high points in Jamaica you would have known is the national identification system, what we call the NIDS. And this is a play to get everyone on a particular number, only single to that individual. And, and it's going to be tied into everything, your bank account, your movements, food, medicine, right here in the land of Jamaica. And it was in the courts last year, early up last year, and they were looking at the issue and the fact that many points of it was unconstitutional. And if we play the next video, we can hear some of those information. The government's point yeah. person in the legal battle for the National Identification System, NIDS, Attorney General Marlene Malahu Fort, has a, was again at pains to defend the proposal of the system. Among the concerns raised by the presiding judges surrounded why the system is so important, yet the government has not put forward any data showing they have lost millions as a result of not having a system like NIDS. Dwayne Anderson attended day two of the sitting and has this report. Is there no other way? Chief Justice Brian Sykes may well have asked that question a dozen times as he addressed Attorney General Marlene Malahu Fort in the NIDS case. The judge wanted to know why Jamaicans would be forced to give a biometric data such as fingerprints under the proposed identification system. In one instance, the Attorney General stuttered out an explanation that not all elements of the data collection are forced, because things like blood samples may be requested by the state, but that explanation was also challenged. Justice Sykes explained that the word may as used in the proposal is the prerogative of the government, meaning the government may ask for additional information such as retina scans and blood samples. However, residents may not say no. The Chief Justice said they would again be forced to give these identifying marks if the state deemed them necessary, failing which they could be jailed or as Justice Sykes puts it, prosecuted again and again and again until they agreed. The Attorney General, however, stressed that any Preacher, data collected would be protected. As, she reminded... Yes. As you, as you can see that those who are listening, the, the trend of that news clipping, which is showing that the opposition was looking and, and pulling apart the different aspects of the documents of the national identification system. And it really shows in many ways how unconstitutional it is. And it was pulling for days and for weeks and for months until it was thrown out of the court. And guess what I said? Guess what I said when this happened early last year? I said, this is only a delay for God's people to move. It's coming back again. And all it took, all it took was a pandemic to fast track. And it's even been fast track now. Just listen to the next clip. 
The government is now seeking to fast track the National Identification System NIDS Act through Parliament. It's the government is now seeking to fast track the National Identification System NIDS Act through Parliament. It says this act will be able to help identify persons who are to receive the benefits that are available, especially with the coronavirus pandemic. But the opposition People's National Party says it will be watching what the government does so that the constitutional rights of citizens are not jeopardized. More in this report. The National Identification System NIDS legislation, which has been on the table for some time, is being looked at during the COVID-19 pandemic as a solution to effectively manage resources. Speaking at the press briefing last Friday, Prime Minister Andrew Hone said the administration will be seeking to fast track the implementation of NIDS. He says the act, when implemented, will provide an individual with a unique identification from birth to death. But in this pandemic, how would it work? If we had the national system of identification, then it would be far easier for the government to provide this kind of individualized benefit system mm. that would be to the benefit of all. Mm. The truth is we now don't have that system. We are behind in its implementation. We still have new legislation to bring to the cabinet and to the parliament, but we cannot waste a crisis. Hmm. But past attempts to implement NIDS failed after the Constitutional that? Court in April 2019 that? Same language. ruled that the it's previous the law was language. null and void. What did the Prime Minister say? We cannot waste a good crisis. I'm trying to bring the message across that the script is the same. Puerto Rico, the Caribbean, Europe, America, the script is the same. And who has written the script? All the way in the Vatican. Laudato Si, all the way through, right here in the island of Jamaica. These are not my words. We are hearing it for ourselves. Revelation chapter 13, when it says you won't be able to buy and sell. How, you know, one person doubted this before. I was talking to a brother before and he says, this is not possible in Jamaica because Jamaica is not so high tech as the United States of America and we have our, our persons who sell on the side of the road and all of these things but let me make something clear to you all we need is a crisis and we have gotten the crisis what is the purpose of this crisis to set in play all the laws Sunday law must begin it's going to come from America Revelation chapter 13 the second beast must give back power to the first beast of revelation 13 1 and 2 no how is this going to happen when ellen white says the final events are going to be rapid one no let's look how it works if you look in india if you look across the world if you look in poland all of them are giving sanctity to sunday but the real enactment is going to come from america how is the final events going to be rapid like a ripple effect when america drops the stone it's going to rush across the world because all across the world, they are already accepted Sunday as holy. We spoke the last time and we brought up blue laws. They're here. They're on the books, not taken off. The fact that they're already on the books, it takes nothing for them to go into effect. Listen, the Hegelian dialectic, Hegelian dialectic, cause and effect, cause and effect. What is happening now? When we look at Jamaica, there is a thing called Zozo. I don't know if you're aware of it, preacher, but Zone of Special Operation. And also what we call SOE, State of Emergency. And all across the island of Jamaica, they have checkpoints. And the basis for which this was done was because of the crime and the violence. Because of the crime and the violence and people were fearing for their safety and, and so forth. And what happened in a crisis is that we don't look at the footprints. What happened in a crisis is that we don't look at it. We don't look at it. We don't understand. But the point is that these things are coming. These things are here. These things are happening. And so, you know, it is time for It is high time for us to awake out of sleep if we go to the next slide 
if we go to the next slide, we can we can see clearly that document. It says the heading says that uh, Jamaica uses biometrics to secure passport issuance system. Passport issuance system. What is the point I'm trying to bring across? We're going from manual to digital. We're going from cash to cashless. We're going to a system where the government can monitor, where the government can control. What is going to be the problem for the people of God, preacher, to buy and sell? What is this in reference to? Food. What is our only safety in such a time? Out of the city into country living. Grow our own food. Listen, the crisis is not coming. It is here. God is only giving us a small window of opportunity to move. Revelation, not Revelation, sorry, but Romans chapter 13 at verse 11. Paul says what? It's high time to awake out of sleep. Now is our salvation nearer than when it fir we first believed. Let's look at the next slide, preacher. Let's look at that headline. Let's look at that headline. What it says, courts to be given latitude to impose penalties under the national identification system. It is happening under the national identification system. It's happening right here. And it's, I hope that the people of God are seeing and they are being awakened to the reality of the situation. You know, the point that must be emphasized, as you stated, what's happening there in Jamaica, we can see the parent nation, the United States of America, we were about to set up, establish the same system for the people in America to receive monies from the stimulus bill to combat the COVID-19 crisis. And we were told <laughs> the law was uh, pulled back, retracted. But Definitely. Mr. Gorfin and others said it's coming in the near future. And all these various countries are setting up the system. Once America pulls that trigger and forces that sudden law, it's going to go as a domino okay. effect around the world. I said to my wife earlier today, I said, look at this. If Jamaica and other nations were not putting these things in place, and it was beer and barren as it relates to having this infrastructure for the Sunday law crisis, and America went ahead and forced that Sunday law, and we know it must go to all the other world nations, it wouldn't be a quick event. It would take time for each country and each island and each nation to then come up to speed. It wouldn't be quick based on what we're told in the Bible and in the spirit of prophecy that God has to shorten the time when the mark of the beast is enforced and the little and the great time of trouble. So what we are seeing now, the infrastructure is being put in place globally and once America draws back that proverbial bow and arrow and let that arrow fly, a Sunday law is enforced. It's like wildfire. No, chapter 11 of Daniel, verse 40 calls it a whirlwind. Okay, preacher, continue. Definitely, definitely. And as you brought up Daniel chapter 11, we ought to bring it to the forefront that this is where we are in prophecy. We are right there in Daniel chapter 11 at about verse 45. The king of the north, which is representing the papacy, is about to move on that glorious land. Is about to move on that glorious land, preacher. This is how it's going to go. This is how it's working. All the countries around America are getting themselves their laws in place, getting the people ready. You're right. By time the arrow is drawn back, it's going to hit the bullseye. It is not going to miss. It is not going to miss. So what, what does it behove of the people of God now? This is what it needs. Character development. Character development. This is what it needs. Character development, preacher. Right? So, so we are there. Let, let's, let's look at the next slide. Let's read a little on the next slide. 
what's the purpose of the next slide? Jamaica for the last 10 years. How long? For the last 10 years has been going by what we call the 2030 vision. The 2030 vision. To make Jamaica a place to work, to live, and to grow your children. What is this 2020-30 vision about? It says this September, we're talking about 2015. 2015. It says this September, world leaders will uh, commit to the global goal for sustainable development to achieve three extraordinary things by 2030. What are these three things? End extreme poverty, fight inequality and injustice, combat climate change. Did you hear that language? Yes. What's the third thing? Combat what? Climate change. It's almost like I could remove that and put what? Lord that or see. It's like I could remove that and put that to see. This is the same plan that Jamaica is working by. Here's what it says. Prayer for everyone. Right? Prayer for everyone. What we're talking about is unity and to be united. The same thing that we could call ecumenism. It's a coming together. And guess who is going to be on the outside? You and I. Why? Why is, why is it we're going to be on the outside? Let me read a statement. I want to read a statement as we talk about unity. This is coming from Great Controversy, page 51, chapter 2. What it says, if unity could be what? Secured only by the what? Compromise of truth and righteousness, then let there be what? Difference War. and even what? War. 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 So as we see the world coming together, we have to stand apart. Not because we want to make enemy, not because we want to be troublesome, but because we have to stand for truth, because we have to stand for righteousness, because we have to stand for the liberty of conscience, the liberty of conscience. I want to say to those watching, those listening abroad and everywhere, it is right here in Jamaica, just as though it's all across the world. You know who came to Jamaica recently? Mike Pompeo. Who is Mike Pompeo? Just a few months ago, Mike Pompeo is the Secretary of State of the United States of America. Now, here's the point, preacher. When we see people like those fly in, he flew in unannounced, a few days, and then he's gone. What happened behind closed door? What is the argument? Well, someone says, preacher, you don't know and I don't know. That is true. But can we have an idea? Well, here's the point. We can know the tree by the fruit that it bears. Can you follow? If it's bearing mango, it's a mango tree. If it's bearing apples, it's an apple tree. As we see the state moving and the laws are changing, <laughs> the script is the same. The script is the same. Let's look at the next um, news article. It says, remember to do what? Keep it holy. It says, church is in favor of more reverence for what? Sabbath? The seventh day? Sunday. What does the article say? Sunday. That was 19, about 1998. That article that has been pulled from the archives is from 1998. How many years ago is that? That's 22 years ago. Mm. We're not talking about something that's happening overnight. Mm. We're talking about something that's been brewing, something that's been building. What is happening to the church? What does Isaiah says? Isaiah 58 verse 1. Cry aloud. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Can I tell you what they're doing? You want to know what we're doing? We're not lifting our voice like a trumpet down here in Jamaica. We're shaking hands. We're becoming friends. That's what's happening, preacher. Yeah. The people don't believe me? Let's prove it. Let's go to the next slide. Let's go to the next slide. It says, the gleaner. Christian unity. But guess what struck my heart? Christian unity. But what follows after that? Dream coming true. Hmm. True. You mean Do a you nightmare? Understand what's happening? <laughs> you said it right. A nightmare. A matter of fact, the picture that we are seeing, that's the president, Everett Brown of Jamaica Union. These are not my words. This is an article in the Gleaner. 2013, April the 6th. That's seven years ago. What did I just say? These things 
these undercurrents have been there brewing and building. We did not get to where we are today in Adventism overnight. You know, we know that Adventism. What's the date for the article? The news report? It's April, it's April 6th, 2013. Okay. 2013. All right. Now, here's the point that I'm bringing across. We are supposed to bring light to darkness. We are supposed to bring truth to the issues. You know, you wonder why the young man was protesting the other day, Jesse Justin, and you wonder why the people were tearing him apart. This is why. Because we have moved away from the landmarks, from the pillars of our faith, from what we once believed. But let's make it clear. Let's make it clear. God will have a people. Preach, I want to bring to light some things in the article. As we, you know, discuss some other things. If you go to the other slide, listen to what it says. Could this be real? It was real. I attended a wonderful celebration just on the eve of Easter. <laughs> Easter, right? The Seventh day Adventists were celebrating at the Medallion Hotel, their fifth year of Good Samaritan Inn at five years or 50 euro circle Kingston where there is a night shelter, food line and clothes line and training center for the poor. That's fine. Or missionaries of the poor, sisters, are practically next door. That's Catholicism, right? At Holy Innocence, home, hero circle. In service of pregnant women, a clinic, soup kitchen, and Sunday worship for our neighbors. We give thanks that hero circle is becoming more and more an annex of God's mercy served by Christian. Listen, this is the unity. Adventists who keep their Sabbath holy, their Sabbath, <laughs> their Sabbath, I want you to see that. Their Sabbath, this is the Lord's Sabbath. But Adventists that keep their Sabbath holy and Roman Catholics who worship their risen Savior, our risen Christ on Sunday. You know, some would think I'm making too much of it. But there's a difference in the language. Their Sabbath and those who keep the Sunday holy for the risen Christ. There's a difference. Listen to this. This is very important. This was asked in a mocking way. The same slide, the last part. It says, are you a Jesuit father? Pastor Everett Brown, president of the Jamaica Union for Seventh-day Adventists, asked smilingly. You know why the word smilingly is there? They're mocking the idea. So people like you and I preacher who bring these things to the forefront, they're mocking that idea. Are you a Jesuit? Smilingly. He said, no, I'm a missionary of the poor. I remarked, it is a Jamaican order founded in Jamaica. It's all over the world. Where? Ask Pastor Brown. In Uganda, Kenya, Philippines, Indonesia, Haiti, India, and USA. All for the poor, in the poorest area, for the poorest people. That sounds so good. Let's continue to the next slide. It's something I want to bring out. The next slide. Here's what it says. How can that be? They're mocking the idea. Listen to the language. How can that be? Question sign. Well, I was a Jesuit. Preacher, what, do you, what, what does you and I know about that? Does a Jesuit change? No. Does a Jesuit change? Mm -hmm. well, I was a Jesuit. And I was trained very well. Jesuit, we know. But can the leopard and no, no, anything no. that comes from the papacy cannot change? That's so, so, right. So that's, that's how right. we connect this. Jesuitism right. is linked to Roman Catholicism. And Very chapter good. 13 of Revelation depicts the papacy as a leopard. Jeremiah 13 right. tells us now in verse 23, can the leopard change its spot? What's the answer? Definitely. No. Go ahead, no. preacher. No. It says, but Christ was calling me to serve the pro poorest of people, which Archbishop Carter's blessing. He was also a Jesuit. <laughs> Jesuit and Jesuit. I began this order by God's grace, and we are knowing all these countries known as the Jamaican brothers. Hmm. We offer free service. We're coming down to what Cyrus, the Reverend Evan Brown. Do you have a problem with that preacher? Yes. Call, call, holy. no man. God alone is Reverend. Reverend and so, holy is his name. So you see what is the problem when we unite together? You see the language has changed? Hmm? This yes. is a problem. 
even the name has changed. What happened to the three Hebrew boys when they went into Babylon? What's the first thing that was changed? Their names. names. And what are we told in the spirit of prophecy? When we're referring to them, we must not use their Babylonian name. It's not Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Right? It, it, we must well, use the... He, yes. No, no. Sorry. We yes. must not say Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It's Ananiah, Mish, um, the, the Hebrew's name. Right? It says Reverend Everett Brown. Listen to this now. Offered special prayers for Pope Francis. Special prayers for Pope Francis. Newly elected. So this was when he just came into office. He prayed, we pray for his guidance and protection. Red words. That God will pour forth many abundant blessings on him and that he will do what is his father's will. Listen to me. The Pope knows what he's doing. And, and this, this type of language speaks to some unity of abomination. We should be sending a message of God's truth. Do you see what's happening right here? Only the wise shall understand. Listen, let's go to the next slide, preacher. Hold on, hold on, I brother. Hold on, hold on, brother. You mean, now, this is not to, 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 to denigrate Pastor Everett Brown. But right. now, now, based on the news record, based on the article, it states he prayed for the man of sin. That's right. That God that he... will pour forth his abundant blessings upon the right. man of sin. Wait a that minute. That is right. The implication is that you are praying, Lord, bless what you have cursed. We, we don't call the Pope the man of sin. The Bible calls him the man of sin, and we agree with the Bible. We agree with Jesus. How are that we going right. to pray for God to bless sin? Can God bless sin? Not at no, all. No, this record has to be altered. Couldn't be true. It is exactly so. It is coming directly from the Gleaner. And if I was carried in court, I would win because this is from the Gleaner. Exactly so. But brother, if I were Pastor Everett Brown and this was written of me in the prominent paper on the island, if it was incorrect, they would have to make a public recantation and correction. It it is, it is very correct. It is very correct. I want you to know that this article was seven years ago. So what would we say in 2020? The union is even more mature. But it's not over. I want to bring something. Go, let's go to the next slide. <laughs> it gets more serious. It gets deeper. I invited Pastor Brown, president of Jamaica Union of Seventh-day Adventists, to visit our monastery. <laughs> All right. So the president went to visit their monastery and our homes for the destitute and homeless and share a luncheon with our brothers. Oh, they're having a good time. They're, they're having a good time. Um, it gets serious. Listen to this. Listen Brother to Lecky, this. hold on. Hold on. Are you going to run past this? Are you telling me God's man from the Seventh-day Adventist, not a little church, behind some bushes the, no. the jamaica union now he is eating at jezebel's table that's right preacher that's eating right. at jezebel's table you remember the prophet at you remember the, oh my you remember the prophet that went to give the message to the king and god says when you're coming don't stop and yes. the false prophet you remember that yes and after, the lion after after he rebuked after he rebuked jeroboam that's right. And the lion tore him to shreds. Yes. Do you see history being repeated right before our eyes? This cannot be correct. It's very correct. Listen, oh, you, you, you hear nothing yet. Listen to this. So he invited him and he went. Follow this now. Watch this now. The Seventh-day Adventists also invited missionaries of the poor and myself to attend a service and special luncheon in the Spanish Town Seventh-day Adventist Church on the following Saturday, which we did. Red words, red words. Listen, preacher, listen, brethren. What a warm and wonderful man Pastor Alton Williams is. That was a the pastor then. He had 12 of us brothers in the front seats, front seats of worship at his Spanish Town Church. We prayed, listen preacher, this is the heights of ecumenism. We sang, we worship with our Adventist brothers, 
Adventist brothers honoring our one true God. Hmm. Our one true God. Let's, wow. let's finish it. We're, we're almost done. We're almost through hmm. the agony preacher. This is now. There was so much warmth. And remember, you know, I'm not getting those warmth, you know. But there was so much warmth, special attention, and good wishes being extended to all our brothers. They were really one with us. They were what? One they were with what us. with us? One. What is that? That's unity, huh? Mm. Listen to this other word in now. As the mystical body of Jesus, I don't even trust that word in, is intended to be. Jesus was the center of our what? In red words. Unity. Of our? Unity. Jesus is the foundation of our mm. unity. Let's read the last slide. Let's read the last slide. Let's read the last slide. We were so glad that our Adventist brothers and sisters has invited us to yet a second gathering of Christians. A second gathering. Our, a second gathering. Our brothers sang their hearts out again. Pastor Alton Williams prayed. The president prayed. And who is now praying? Pastor Alton Williams prayed for new Pope Francis. This Pope now. I pray, listen, listen to his own words in quotation. I pray that he will fulfill the will of God's plan for him. That he will obey the Lord and do whatever he wills. Those are his words, end quote. There was a moment of profound silence. A moment of what? Profound silence. Again, I felt that, that something special was happening in God's kingdom. We were all coming from different directions to the one true God on Mount Zion. Let's talk about ecumenism. This is it. On, on, Listen, on Mount Zion? Oh, yes. oh you, yes. Are you telling me the 140 and 4,000 will include these in the Pope Francis? Oh, oh, what a message. Listen to this last part. Pastor Williams called me to give a word of greeting. Only thing that was left is for them to ask him to preach. I prayed red words, red words. I prayed for what? Christian unity. I prayed that we would be one, even as Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit are one. Mm. You know, right now, right now, we are feeling, because we have feelings. We are feeling what the Bible calls righteous indignation and we are but humans imagine how christ felt imagine how the lord jesus feels presently how are you going to now preach the everlasting gospel who will you preach to what are they coming out of because we're all one and we can be one you hold on to paganism and we can still be one. So who are you preaching to? A matter of fact, here in Jamaica. What are they uh, coming out of and where are you bringing them? Exactly. No wonder I, it's now a social gospel. You know what? The floor is yours. Because if I start, I won't finish. This is appalling to say the least. Preacher, even the crusades we're having now, the sermons are no different from... Sunday worship. As a matter of fact, we don't even preach the mark of the beast much anymore. Hold on. Why? Preacher, hold on. No wonder now. Please, hold on. Hold on. No wonder now the Prime Minister, Andrew Holness of Jamaica, could make those statements. Exactly. And there is no public response from yes, our churches right. regarding those laws because they believe nothing is wrong with those laws. Right. We are one. We can worship that on Sunday also. Go ahead, preacher. I want to tell you that even here, I know there's even a thing called exchange pulpits, you know. There's a thing called exchange pulpits where even some of our Adventist pastors, they'll go and preach in a Sunday church on a Sunday. We are here, preacher. We are here. So when we talk about Seventh-day Adventist church being the largest religious body in Jamaica, do you understand why there's no voice? Do you now understand? That's why I brought this article out, to give some context to what we are saying. That is why my cry 
throughout Jamaica and that has made me an enemy is to leave the buildings. I say one thing. I say, I say this. If you can find a Seventh-day Adventist building in all of Jamaica, which the pastor and the elders follow the thus say the Lord, the spirit of prophecy and the Bible, stay. But if you can't, leave. Because here is the problem, preacher. They are preparing people to receive the mark of the beast. What is going to happen? And, and that is why they tore up the young man. That is why we're not seeing the issue. That is why we're not seeing liberty of conscience being affected. That is the reason. This article was seven years ago. This was seven years ago. So here's a question I'd like to ask. So how far has that unity come? How far has that unity come? And preacher, how can they stand up against Sunday when they have united with Sunday? In other words, here's the point. They worship on Sunday. We worship on Sabbath. We are all children of God. Let's unite in the love of Jesus Christ. St. John 14, verse 15. What does it say? If you love me, keep my commandments. commandments. Sunday worship is breaking. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 to 11. So when we say the prime minister has affiliation with Adventism, do you now understand the problem? Adventism has lost its way. And so even though he has affiliation, I'm telling you, it's quite possible he doesn't know. He doesn't understand. And someone must bring light to darkness. There must be a voice crying in the wilderness. Where are the modern John the Baptist? We are in serious problem. It's coming. And here's the thing with watchmen. We don't see when it gets to the gate. Watchmen stand in the highest tower so they can see far. Far ahead. So when they warn the city, the people have time to get ready long before the army reach. I believe we are mirroring AD 66. The world has been brought to its knees. God is going to reprieve or give us a time to flee. Preacher, country living has, I've been in the church from 2003 when I was 16 years old. This year will make 17 years in the church. I have never heard in the buildings anything about any country living so here's my point if that's pivotal and critical and Ellen White makes statements like those who are caught in the city at a certain time will be lost that to me is very important and if that has never been preached in the church and and and, and that's not believed then how are the people going to stand the people are going to be caught in the lines. You saw the long lines? You showed it the other last week. You saw those long lines? Yes. Huh? You know what? You know what? You know, you know what the news picked up Saturday? You know what the news picked up Saturday? Let me tell you what the news picked up Saturday. A lady who said she had to come out here on her Sabbath to buy food. No, there's many things wrong with that. Number one, she would have failed the test. But number two, it's it's speaking of a, a greater issue. The fact that so will the people come under that pressure and they're going to yield. They're going to yield because they were not being prepared. Listen to what Psalms 37 and verse 25, it says, David said, I was young, now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging bread. But here's a question, preacher. Who are the righteous? The righteous are those that follow the will of God the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, Revelation 19, verse 10, which is the spirit of prophecy. As the spirit of prophecy giving us ways to go and to move and orders to march, yes. But what's going to happen when you look at situations like these, when they're all united together? As a matter of fact, I didn't bring out all of the articles, or the article, the one I just read, but there's a part in the article that said all the People in the congregation shouted, Amen. You mean when he prayed for the Pope? Yes. When a Seventh day Adventist prayed for the Pope. Just imagine David praying for Goliath. Just imagine David going to say, I'm going to pray for God to bless Goliath. Imagine that. Imagine, hold on, hold on. 
just imagine when God's spirit left King Saul and Samuel was weeping for King Saul. King Saul, the tribe of Benjamin, not a pagan outside. And God's spirit left King Saul and God told Samuel, stop weeping for Saul. I've chosen another. If God could say that to Samuel, don't weep for King Saul. My spirit has left him. Would God approve of a Seventh-day Adventist praying for the Pope? Whose God's spirit has not been with. He's a man of sin. The man of sin. You think about that, my friends. And, and, and you know, you're right. Because here's the point. This is the first Jesuit Pope. And you and I know, oh, preacher, he's not ignorant. He knows exactly what he's doing. He is fully aware of what he's doing. Fully aware. I listen to him. We see his dark speeches. I'm going to share something with you. Listen to this, preacher. And, and, and those who are listening. The church of which I was a member, the building, right? Which is the same church that that young man had come from, Jesse Justin, 10th to 7th day Adventist church. A friend related something to me that happened recently. Listen to this. A particular elder went up one Sabbath to speak, to preach. When the young man sat down and listened, guess what? When he listened to the words coming from the elder that was speaking, guess whose words were they? Pope Francis. So he went to the elder after and said, elder, you don't realize that you're speaking the very words of Pope Francis? And the elder to himself was shocked. And guess what the elder said to him? Boy, you know, I was just given a message to present. Did you hear that? Did you hear what I just say? So, so he's going to speak and someone gives him a prepared script. That prepared script has in it, contained in it, some of the very speeches and words from Pope Francis. So what am I to say? Where are we today? When the very hellish torch of Satan, some would, you know, sometimes I, I have to evaluate myself. Is it that I'm so wrong when, you know, you say these plain things and people would want to make you look like an enemy. But that is the hellish torch of Satan. That's not the message of God. When we have the spirit of prophecy, we have the Bible, and we're in the right time of, of prophetic events. We're on the edge of time and the beginning of eternity. And what are we getting from the pulpit? Pope Francis' message. What? Hmm. So here's the point. I here's heard, the conclusion. Uh, yes, yes. Jamaica is ready for the national Sunday law. Church and state. Yes. And all it's going to take is for the right crisis. This crisis is not the right one. This one is to get all the laws in place. This one is to get the draconian laws passed. Mm -hmm. My message is this. Flee the city now. Mm -hmm. I'm making my preparation to flee, brethren. Let us get out mm -hmm. and let us read. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. Study to show thyself approve unto God. A workman need not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Yes. You cannot trust your elders. You cannot trust the pastors. You cannot trust your president. You can't trust me or Pastor Enriquez. You trust the word of God. Paul says, follow me as I follow who? Christ. Christ. What was the other message Paul was giving? If I'm not following Christ, what are you supposed to do? Don't follow me. Don't follow me. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. So, friends, you have heard. I believe the Spirit of God has spoken. And it's not new. It's, it's not new what we're seeing in Jamaica. This is not an anomaly just for Jamaica, the union president. And we're going to pray for Pastor Everett Brown right now. We're going to pray for him. And uh, I'm praying for... Um, Mr. Angel Holness as well. Pray for their conversion. But we're not going to pray for the Pope. No. We're not going to pray for the Pope. Let's get that clear. All right. Let's be candid about that and emphatic about that. But most of you recall here in America, you had some Seventh-day Adventists on social media even praising the Pope. Pope Francis, when after he rubbed this lady the wrong way, when he sm smashed her hand and, and showed anger, 
and and sh he was petulant toward that that lady he came afterwards and apologized you had sda ministers saying oh the pope did a wonderful thing he apologized have they forgotten great controversy page 571 hmm? that the papacy say it, say it, because i'm thinking the same thing i'm thinking the same thing the chameleon come on say it preacher covering with apologies her record of horrible cruelties she hath clothed herself in Christ-like garments, but she is unchanged. That's great unchanged. controversy, page 571. Friends, we could go on and on and on. Here's the point. As a physician, you're feeling symptoms. You receive your diagnosis. Then you receive treatment and cure. We have just received a diagnosis. We see the symptoms in the churches, in our hearts. What's the treatment? Brother Lecky has just given it to us, laid it out carefully for us. And as we said earlier in Midday Power Search, where are the schools of the prophets? Where are they? And every church should be a training school. So friends, God has to raise up. God has to raise up. I want to be very candid. God has to raise up churches independent of the conferences. We're in. They will follow a thus saith the Lord. Bible and spread of prophecy and not a thus saith man and a thus saith the state. Is that point clear, my friends? And God is doing so. So those of you in Jamaica who are, can I say, plain church, lackadaisical, there is a ministry there that you can support by God's grace. Friends, it's time to get ready. It's time to be trained. It's time to do a work before it is too late. May we stop talking and start working on our own Amen. salvation and on the salvation of others before it is too late. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we thank you for this prophetic insight. So much more could be shared. We thank you for what was shared. We had some audio difficulties, but I pray that would not be an obstacle for the hearing of your people to comprehend these truths. Father, we uplift, firstly, the Prime Minister of Jamaica, Mr. Andrew Holness. We pray for his conversion. We pray for his eyes to be enlightened, as you did for Nebuchadnezzar do for him. As you did for Darius, do for him. And now, Lord, I pray for um, the union president of the SDA church there in Jamaica, Mr. Everett Brown, Pastor Brown. We pray for his conversion. And Father, we pray for the other pastor mentioned and the people who were commending and glorifying a prayer for the man of sin, the Pope of Rome. Praying for the one who will persecute your own people. Eating with the persons that will persecute your own people. Drinking from the table, the wine cup, from those who will persecute your own people. That is sad. That makes us spiritually livid and incensed, to say the least. But Father, take away hatred. Because we're only human. And may we even love our enemies and leave vengeance to you. But we're not going to be silent. We're not going to be neutral. By your grace, we will not be indifferent because sin by its right name. By your grace, we will cry aloud. By your grace, we will spare not. And as we work without, may we not neglect the work within that we may become converted and remain converted, claiming Christ's righteousness as our only hope. Save us, we pray. Bless your people in the name of Jesus Christ. And even the ministry there in Jamaica uh, and uh, uh, Brother Lecky and the others, for Christ's sake, amen. Amen. All right, amen. friends, until we meet again, evangelist, stay tuned. I want to talk with you off the air. All right, friends, until we meet again tomorrow for Midday Power Surge, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time, by God's grace, Maranatha.